Hi guys, welcome back. This is Professor Hank. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of C++ 11 features that you might have forgotten about or that you never learned about. And specifically, we're going to talk about two keywords that are used in the context of object-oriented programming. We're going to look at final and we're going to look at override. And those of you who are Java programmers, these Keywords probably sound pretty familiar to you, but if you're in C++ and you haven't been, you know, if you have never came across them, then they might be, they might be new, or like I said, you might've forgotten them. So what are they for? So the final keyword is applied to a method in a base class that you want to guarantee never gets overridden in a derived class. Okay. So you add this modifier final, and if any derived classes that inherit from it, from the class that contains the, the final method, try to override it, then you're gonna get a compile time error, okay? The other keyword is override, and that is a keyword that you use. It's kind of optional. Matter of fact, it is completely optional. And it's just something that you can include in your method definition, your method header in the derived class, where you specify explicitly, you tell the compiler explicitly, hey, I'm intending to override a method. And this is telling the compiler, hey, can you just double check me? Can you make sure that I didn't forget something? So it can cause the compiler to give you an error message saying, no, you, you made a mistake here, or you're trying to override something that doesn't exist, for example. You made some kind of mistake. And so it's just a way to explicitly, uh, plus check on yourself, right? And have the compiler double check for you. So let's go ahead and get started and take a look at examples of both of these. We'll do final first, then we'll do override. So let's create a class called foo. Okay. And I'll just have it have a silly little method here. Um, that's just going to be called print. Okay. And all it's going to do is see out hello. Okay. So if I instantiate it, the foo class and I call uh, the print method, then you're going to see there's the hello there. Okay. Awesome. Nothing too exciting, but now let's go ahead and create a child class that's going to inherit from foo and we'll override the print function from foo with a virtual. And we'll change the behavior here. See out, uh, we'll just print out um, goodbye. All right. So overriding, right? So that allows me then, oops, that allows me to create a bar object and do print. And we've overridden the uh, base class is print method, right? So you can see there's the, the goodbye that was a result of the bar version, okay? Now, if I wanted to explicitly forbid that from happening, if I wanted to say no, um, in my foo class, nobody will ever, ever replace print, then I could put that final modifier here, okay? And if I do that, you can see the red squiggle appears, and now it's an error. If I try to build, you can see it says error, foo print function declared as final, cannot be overwritten by bar print, right? So in that way, if you need to, you want to ensure that this is the very final version of this particular method. Nobody else can ever change it ever in the history of ever. Then you can make it final and that, that'll be the uh, behavior that you have, okay? So let's go ahead then and see what override does. Now let us say that um, I had a method in here, I don't know, I'll just call it fill, okay, and it was going to, um, you know, just see out x, okay, and uh, I decided then that I wanted to override that method, right, so I could come into my bar class and I could say, you know, void foo, um, double X, something like that. Okay. 
Um, oops. Don't you hate it when Visual Studio double, you know, automatically corrects for you like that? And then here I was going to see out X, but maybe I was going to say something slightly different. Maybe I was going to do um, see out X times X. Right? So it's a slightly different method. Okay, now nothing too exciting here. So if I was to do uh, my bar B and say B dot foo, okay, and pass it down to three, okay, uh, oops, B dot foo, then uh, what am I going to see? I should see my nine on the screen, right? And I do, all right? Now, nothing too exciting there. Again, what, what, you didn't do anything crazy. I don't have to use the override keyword, but if I do, what I'm doing is I'm telling the compiler, hey, can you give me um, a little bit extra um, protection, all right? Can you um, make sure that I'm doing something that I should be doing, right? Make sure that I'm doing it correctly, all right? So now once I put override in here, all right, suddenly I get an error message. Why? Because it says, let me go back and bring that up for you again. It says what? Right. It did not override any base class methods. Okay. So why? Why? Well, the signatures are different. Okay. So let me go in here and change this to int. Okay. Now, if I do int, it's an actual full on override. See how it caught that? Okay. So now it works again just fine, okay? Now, another way that it can catch your potential errors is if maybe you forget that virtual keyword in the base class, okay? See how the squiggle appears again? And if I try to build it again, did not override any base class methods. So as we saw with the very first example, Right? I don't necessarily need to um, include that override keyword, right? It's going to work, okay? But it is a way for me to specifically tell the compiler, hey, check, check up on me, right? Okay, so that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. We talked about a couple of features from C++11 that you might have forgotten or maybe never had the chance to learn about. There was the override keyword and the final keyword. Give you a brief description of what they are, what they're used for, and a couple of examples. So as usual, if you're a student of mine and you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email or stop by my office hours. And if you thought the video was good, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, you can go ahead and give it a thumbs down as well. Consider a subscribe, it really helps us out. And you can also support the channel by joining as a member for additional perks. All right, so that's everything that I've got for you. This time, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.